I'm gonna tell you about all of this. Aunt Mamie was a little colored girl. Aunt Effie was a little colored girl. Mama was a little colored girl. You're a little colored girl. Imagine if we could get all of them to talk, what would they say? Imagine all the stories we could tell about the funny looking little colored girls and the sophisticated little colored girls and the pretty little colored girls, the ones just like you. Yeah. Grandpa used to sing that song and grandma used to sing that. I used to sing it and you're gonna sing it. Mama's little baby loves shortening, shortening. Mama's little baby loves shortening bread. Mama's little baby loves shortening, shortening. Mama's little baby loves shortening bread. Two little children laying in the bed. One was sick and one was sick. Pa was up the back of the bed. He knows his own fucking bread. Mama's little baby loves shortening, shortening. Mama's little baby loves shortening bread. All right, Savannah, here we go. I want to sing. Make you dance like the box hot, dance, scream, twitch hips with me. I done forgot all about words, ain't got no definitions. I want to whirl with you. Our body wrapped like a ripe mango, whirling, whipping through space on the corner in the park where the rug used to be. Let Willie Colon take you out. Swing your head, put your leg to the moon with me. We're on the Lower East Side in New York City, and I can't, I can't talk with you no more. We got to... Dance to keep from crying, we got to dance to keep from dying. So come on, come on, hold your head like it was Ruby Sapphire. I'm a poet who writes in English, come to share the worlds with you. We come to share our worlds with you. We come here to be dancing, to be dancing, to be dancing. And this is for colored girls who have considered suicide, but are moving to the ends of our own rainbows. Virgin in the crowd. 
smelling a thunderbird and ladies in heat. <laughs> we ramble from Camden to Mount Holly, laughing at the afternoon speeches, dangling our tassels from the rearview mirror, climbing different side of Project Stairs, moving towards snapping beer cans. <laughs> Cosmetology, secretarial, pre-college, auto shop, and business. All of us moving from mama to whatever was out there. Oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That night, we raced this big old truck from the barbecue stand, <laughs> trying to tell him about the party at Jackie's where the folks that graduated last year was waiting to hit it with us. Oh, girl. Mm -hmm. Oh, girl. I got drunk. Oh, we heard I about that, Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> you heard. <laughs> and couldn't figure out whose hand was on my thigh. <laughs> but it didn't matter, because these cousins, oh, Martin, Eddie Savage, Jerome, and Bobby, oh, was Martin, all Martin. my sweethearts, alternately since the seventh grade. Mm -hmm. uh, and everybody knew I always started crying if somebody actually tried to take advantage of me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and Jackie, you Linda Mason was poking her mouth all out. As we tumbled out the Buick, oh, Eddie Freeman was her licking stick. But I knew how to dance. Mm -hmm. And it got so hot. Vincent Ramos, Vincent Ramos puked all in the pond. Clifford jumped all in Tico's face. Well, that's because he was leaving for the Navy in the morning. He had a kick ass, so we'd all remember how bad he mm -hmm. was. Seemed like Sheila and Marguerite was afraid to get their hair turning back. So they leaned up against the wall looking almost sexy. Didn't want to sweat. But me and my fellas, we was dancing. Ever since 1963, I'd won all kind of contests with the cousins at the police athletic league dancing. Don't break it, don't and break all it. Mercer County knew any kin to Martin Henderson could turn a somersault or Smokey Robinson could get a woman excited. Oh, oh, and we danced, doing nasty old tricks. I know. <laughs> doing nasty old tricks. That's my favorite. Well, I've been thinking since Maker's graduation night had to be hot, and I was the only virgin in the crowd. <laughs> so I had to make like my hips was into some business. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. tired. So tired. That way they thought whoever was getting it was an old man. Couldn't run the streets with youngsters. Girl, Martin slipped his leg around my thigh. Uh -oh. ooh, ooh, okay. <laughs> and the Dales bump stayed. Up and down. Up and down. Up and down a new cover. Holmes, girls, we was grown. And we about no party. I know. Tell us that. And then Bobby started looking at me. <laughs> Listen. Yeah, girl. Girl, he started looking at me real strange, like, like I was a woman or something. And then he started talking real soft to me in the back seat of that old Buick. By daybreak, I just couldn't stop grinning. thought he was Puerto Rican, mm -hmm. and we would have been, except we was regular niggas. 
<laughs> with hints of Spanish. So I made off to this 36-hour marathon dance con salsa con Ricardo Chigure on Southern Boulevard. It's next door to this photography place, jammed with burial and wedding and communion relics. Next door to Lare Al Ideal Genuine Spanish Barber. <laughs> And it was up, up, upstairs and lots of hallway when my colored New Jersey self didn't know what anybody was saying. Except if dancing was proof of origin, I was Hibarita herself. That night and the next day, I kept smiling and right on stepping. If he could lead, I was ready to dance. Ooh. And if he couldn't lead, I caught this attitude that I had seen Rosa do and would not be bothered. <sighs> Hipping, giving much quick feet, being a mute, cute, colored Puerto Rican till Saturday afternoon when the disc jockey say, Atiendame, muchachos, por favor. Él lo sentimos mucho, pero Willie Colón no puede estar con nosotros esta noche. Willie Colón ain't gonna make it today. Pero en su lugar, para que ustedes continúen la fiesta y sigan bailando, es aquí la salsa de Guayaba. temper come out of control. Oh, I like. No, thank you. And I wouldn't dance with nobody. And I talked English loud. Oh, and I loved you more than I was mad. Uh-huh. More than, more than. When I discovered Archie Shep and subtle blues, oh, don't you know I wore out the magic of Juju. Heroically resisting being possessed. Oh, the sounds. And sneaking in underage to slugs to stare at a real artiste. And every word out of Imamu's mouth was gospel. And if Jesus couldn't blow no horn like Shep, was no need for colored folks to bear no cross at all. And poems is my thank you for music. And I love you more than poems. More than Aureliano Buendia loved Macondo. More than Hector Laveau loves himself. More than the lady loved gardenias. More than Celia loves Cuba or Graciela loves El Son. More than the flamingos. Shoo doo, shoo be doo. Love being pretty. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Negro. Te amo más que. Te amo más que when you play your flute. Te amo más que. Te amo más que. Without any assistance or guidance from you, I have loved you assiduously for eight months, two weeks, and a day. I've been stood up four times. I've left seven packages on your doorstep, 40 poems, two plants, and three handmade note cards. I left town so I could send them to you. You have been no help to me on my job. You call me up 3 o'clock in the morning on a weekday so I can drive 27 and a half miles across the bay before I go to work. <laughs> charming, charming. You have been of no assistance. I want you to know this has been an experiment to see how selfish I could be if I could really carry on to snare a possible lover, if I was capable of debasing 
sacrificing myself for the love of another. If I could stand not being wanted when I wanted to be wanted and I cannot. So, with no further assistance or guidance from you, I am ending this affair. <sighs> this note is attached to a plant. I have been watering since the day I met you. Water it your damn self. Tubes, tables, whitewash windows, grime from age wiped over ones, legs spread, anxious eyes crawling up on me. Eyes rolling in my face. <laughs> Metal horses gnawing my womb. Oh. Dead mice fall from my mouth. I really didn't mean to. I really didn't think I could. Just one day, one day off. Off oh, for me, all of these bones and, and uh, shattered like soft ice cream cones. Oh, oh, I couldn't have my, my people looking at me pregnant. I couldn't have my friends see this dying dangling between my legs and. And I didn't say a thing. Not a sigh. Or a fast scream to get those eyes off of me. Get those steel rods out of me. This hurts. This hurts me and nobody came because nobody Pregnant and ashamed of myself. <laughs> Once. There were quadroon balls. Elegance in St. Louis, laced mulattoes gambling down the Mississippi to Memphis, New Orleans, and, and okra crepes near the bayou where the poor white trash would sing, moaning strange liquid tones through the swamps. Chateau had heard these things. She moved as, as if she'd known them, the silver and high-toned laughing, the violins and the marble floors. Say she to push the clinging delta dust with painted toes. The patchwork tent was polka dotted and stale light snatched at the shadows. Creole carnival is playing natchez in 10 minutes. Splendid red garden. 
heart is chin stained and itching on the thighs. Black diamond stockings darned with yellow threads. An old starch taffeta can can fell abundantly orange from her waist round the splintering chair. Say, Shita, Egyptian goddess of creativity, second millennium threw her heavy hair in a coil over her neck. Say, Shita, goddess, the recording of history. Spread crimson oil on her cheeks, waxed her eyebrows, and unconsciously slurred the last hard whiskey in the glass. The broken mirror she used to, to decorate her face made her forehead tilt backwards. Her cheeks appear sunken, a sassy chin only large enough to keep a full lower lip from growing into her neck. Say Chateau had learned to make allowances for the distortions, but the heavy dust of the Delta left a, a tinge of grit and darkness on every one of her dresses, on her arms and on her shoulders. Say Chateau was anxious to get back to St. Louis. At least there the dirt didn't crawl from the earth into your soul. At least in St. Louis the grime was store-bought, secondhand. But here in Natchez, God seemed to be wiping his feet in her face. One of the wrestlers had finally won. Tonight, the mulatto Raul is supposed to hold the booming half cast, sear an eagle in a bear hug, eight counts, get thrown unawares, fall out the ring, then do sear an eagle in for good. Say she could hear redneck whoops and slappings on the back. She gathered her sparsely sequined shirts, tugged the waist cincher from round her gray and slips, and made her face immobile. She made her face like Nefertiti approaching her own tomb. She suddenly threw a leg full force through the canvas curtain, who a deceptive glass stone sparkled malignant on her ankle. Her calf was taunting in the brazen carny light. The full moon Sanchita, goddess of love, Egypt, second millennium, performing the rites, the conjuring of men, conjuring of spirits in Natchez. The Mississippi spewed a heavy fume of barely moving waters. Say she just leg kicked viciously through the crack of night, and gold pieces hitting the makeshift stage her thighs. They were aiming coins between her thighs. Say she the goddess love harmony kicked viciously through the night, catching stars between her toes. Now, the library was right down from the trolley tracks, across from the laundromat, through the big shining floors and granite pillars old St. Louis is famous for. I found Tucson, my first black man. But not till after months of Cajun Katie, Pippi Longstocking, Christopher Robin, and old Pooh Bear. In the children's room only, only magic rabbits and big city white boys. I knew I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> I knew I wasn't supposed to. But I ran into the adult reading room and came across two songs. My first black man. I never counted George Washington Carr because I didn't like peanuts. Still, Toussaint was a black man, a Negro like my mama said, who refused to be a slave and spoke French and didn't allow no white man to tell him nothing. Not Napoleon, not Maximilian, not Robespierre. Toussaint Louverture was the beginning of reality for me. In the summer contest, for who colored child could read 15 books in three weeks, I won. And raved about Toussaint Louverture at the afternoon ceremony was disqualified because Toussaint belonged in the adult reading room. And I cried and carried dead Toussaint home in the book because he was dead. 
and living to me. Because Toussaint and them, they held a citadel against the French with the spirits of all dead Africans from out of the ground. Toussaint led their army of zombies, cannonballs, shooting spirits to free Haiti. And they wasn't slaves no more. Toussaint Louverture became my secret lover at the age of eight. I entertained him in my bedroom with a flashlight under the covers. Way into the night, we discussed strategies how to remove white girls from my hopscotch games, etc. Toussaint was laying in bed with me next to Raggedy Ann the night I decided to run away from my integrated home, integrated street, integrated school. 1955 was not a good year for little black girls. Toussaint said, let's go to Haiti. Along the line deep. And I said, all right. And packed some very important things in a brown paper bag so I wouldn't have to come back. Then Toussaint and I took the Hardemont streetcar to the river. Last stop was only 15 cents cause couldn't nobody see Toussaint except me. We walked all down through South St. Louis where the French settlers used to live in tiny brick houses all huddled together with barely missing windows and shingles uneven with colored kids playing and women on low porches sipping beer. I could talk to Tucson down by the river like this is where we was gonna stow away on a boat to New Orleans and catch a Creole fishing rig to Port-au-Prince. Then we was just gonna read and talk all the time and eat fried bananas. We was just walking and skipping past old drunk men. Hey, girl. When this old young boy jumped out at me, You, you saying, better come on over here and talk to me. I turned to Toussaint, who was furious. Then I shouted, you silly old boy, you better leave me alone or Toussaint's gonna get your ass. Ha <laughs> ha, yellow girl. Well, you sure must be somebody to know my name so quick. I was disgusted and wanted to get on to Haiti without some tacky old boy bothering me. Still, he kept standing there kicking milk cartons and bits of brick trying to get all in my business. I mumbled to Louverture, what should I do? Finally, I asked this silly old boy, well, who are you? My name is Toussaint Jones. I looked right at him. Those skidded out corduroy pants and a striped t-shirt with holes in both elbows, new scab over his left eye, and I said, what's your name again? I am Toussaint Jones. Wow. I, I'm on my way to Haiti to see Toussaint Louverture. You any kin to him? He don't take no stuff from no white folks, and they got a country all they own, and they ain't no slaves. Hey, look here, girl. I am Toussaint Jones, and I'm right here looking at you. And I don't take any stuff from no white folks. You don't see nothing around here, do you? And he sort of stuck out his chest. Come on. Let's go on down to the docks and look at the boats. I was real puzzled going down to the docks with my brown paper bag and my books. I sort of felt Toussaint Louverture sort of leave me, and I was sad till I realized Toussaint Jones wasn't too different from Toussaint Louverture, except the old one was in Haiti, and this one was with me. Speaking English and eating apples. Yeah. Toussaint Jones was all right with me. Ain't no telling what all spirits we could move down by the river in St. Louis. 1955. Orange butterflies and aqua sequins and sconced green slight bosoms. Silk roses darting from behind my ears. The passion flower of Southwest Los Angeles. Meanders down Hoover Street. Past dark shuttered houses where women from Louisiana shell peas round three o'clock and send their sons whistling to the store for fat back and black eyed peas. I glitter in heat and seem to be looking for rides when I'm not, and absolutely I every man who isn't white. <laughs> Lame, I'm not, not. 
I let my thigh slip from my skirt. Crossing the street, I slow to be examined, and I never look back to smile or acknowledge a sincere, hey, mama, or to meet the eyes of someone purposely finding something to do in my direction. <laughs> she was sullen, and the rhinestones etching the corners of her mouth suggested tears. <laughs> Fresh kisses that had done no good. She always wore her stomach out, lined with small iridescent feathers. The hairs around her navel seemed to dance. <laughs> Yet she never let on she knows from behind her waist is aching to be held. The pastel ivy drawn on her shoulders to be brushed with lips and fingers smelling of honey and Jack Daniels. <laughs> I'm hot. A deliberate coquette who never does without what I want. And I want to be unforgettable. I want to be a memory. A wound to any man arrogant enough to want her. She is the wrath of women in windows, finger in shades, old lace curtains camouflaging stretch marks and despair. So she glitters honestly, delighted she is desired. <laughs> and allows those especially scheming, tactful suitors to experience her body and spirit, tearing, so easily blending with theirs. And they are so happy, and lay on her lime sheets full, and wet from her tongue, she kisses them reverently, mm -hmm. even ankles, edges of beards. <laughs> At 4.30 a.m., she arose, moving the arms and legs that trapped her. She sighed, affirming the sculptured man, and made herself a bath of dark musk oil, Egyptian crystals, and Florida water to remove his smell, to wash away the glitter, to watch the butterflies melt into the suds and the rhinestones fall beneath her buttocks like smooth pebbles on a Missouri creek. Laying in water, she became herself, ordinary brown braided woman with big legs, full lips, regular seriously intending to finish her night's work. I have to go now. I have a lot of work to do, and I can't with a man around. But here are your pants. There's a coffee on the stove. It's been very nice. But I can't see you again. You got what you came for, didn't you? Why don't you come on back to bed, and I'll take care of you. There, your pants. You know, I couldn't possibly wake up with a strange man in my bed. Have you ever fainted, huh? You want to faint? Hmm? <laughs> Just tell me what you want. <laughs> don't be shy. Why don't you go home? Why don't I go home? She could have been slapped upside the head or verbally challenged. But she never was. <laughs> it 
and the ones who fell prey to the dazzle of hips painted with orange blossoms and magnolia-scented wrists had wanted no more than to lay between her sparkling thighs and had planned on leaving before dawn. And she had been so divine, devastatingly bizarre the way her mouth fit round. And now she sat there a regular colored girl. Full of the same malice, livid indifference, as a sister warned from supporting a would-be horn player or waiting by the window, and they knew and left in a hurry. <laughs> she would gather her jewels and tinsel from the tub and laugh, gaily or vengeful. <laughs> She stored her silk roses by her bed. And when she had finished writing the account of her exploit, in a diary embroidered with lilies and moonstones, she placed the rose behind her ear and cried herself to sleep. Three of us like a pyramid. Three friends. It's one laugh and one music and one flowered shawl knotted on each neck. We all saw him at the same time. And he saw us. And I felt this quick thump in each one of us. Didn't know what to do. We all wanted what was coming our way. So we split. But he found one. She loved him. And the other two were tickled. And spurned his advances when the one who loved him was somewhere else. Girl, he would come to her saying, uh, your friends love you very much. I have tried, and they keep asking, where are you? <laughs> I smiled, wondering how long my friends would hold out. He was what we were looking for. Mm -hmm. He bided his time. He waited till romance waned. And then the three of us made up stories. <laughs> About used to it. Could have been nice. Girl, the season was dry. There was no men. There was no quickies. Not one dance. Four eyes unrelenting. One day after another. Except for the one who loved him. He appeared irregularly. Expecting graciousness no matter what. Hmm. I cut. Fresh strawberries. <laughs> My friends caught less frequently. We were on hunts for passing fancies. And I couldn't figure out what was happening. Then the rose that I left on his pillow found on my friend's desk. There was nothing to say. I said I want to tell you. He'd been after me all the time. He said he was free and could explain and what, what was, was happening with her was nothing to you. And he doesn't want to hurt you, but he knows you need somebody now. And you know how wonderful he is. I couldn't speak or cry. We hugged. Went to where he was with another woman. Said goodbye to one. And told the other he would call. He smiled a lot. She held her head on her lap. The lap of her sisters soaking up tears. And each understanding how much love stood between them. How much love between them. Love between us. Love between us. Love between us. Love. Like sisters. <laughs> I used to live in the world. Then I moved to Harlem, and my universe is now six blocks. When I walked in the Pacific, I imagined waters ancient from Accra, Tunis, cleansing me, feeding me. Now my ankles are coated in the gray filth from the puddle neath the hydrant. 
My oceans were life. What waters I have here sit stagnant, circling old men's bodies and broken little whiskey bottles left to make me bleed. I used to live in the world. Then I moved to Harlem and my universe is six blocks, a tunnel with a train. I can ride anywhere remaining a stranger. Baby, you sure is looking fine tonight. You seem to be going my way, so you won't mind if I come with you? No, nah, man, you can't come with me. I don't even know you, baby. Uh, since we're hitting it off so well, why don't you give me a kiss? I don't want to kiss you. You ain't but 12 years old. Hey, baby, I'm in the prime of my life. You leave me alone. Hey, baby, you know you won't come Gone. with me. Gone. Yeah, tomorrow. See, I can't use it. I could stay alone, a woman in the world. Then I move to Harlem. I come in at dusk, stay close to the curb round midnight, pray and won't no young man think I'm pretty in a dark morning. Wouldn't be good. Not good at all to meet a tall, short, black, brown young man full of his power in the dark in my universe of six blocks. Straight up, brick walls, Women hanging out of windows like old silk stockings. Cats crying, children giggling. A tavern with red curtains, bad smells. Kissing ladies, smiling and, and dirt. Cursing men, spitting, playing. Hey, I spent more money yesterday than the day before. And all that's more than you nigga ever got a hold to. Hey, bitch. Hey, mama. Come over here. Look at this. Can't you see this is five dollars? Oh, sister, do your thing. Don't pay them no mind. Never mind. I used to be in the world. Really be in the world. Free and sweet. Talking. Good morning. Thank you. Nice day. Uh-huh. I can't now. I can't be not to nobody. Nice is such a ripoff. Regular beauty and a smile in the streets is just a setup. I used to be in the world, a woman in the world. I had a right to the world. Then I moved to Harlem for the setup. Six blocks of cruelty piled up on itself, a tunnel closing. Ever since I realized there was someone called a colored girl, an evil woman, a bitch, or a nag. I've been trying not to be that. Leave bitterness in somebody else's cup and come to somebody to love me without deep and nasty smelling scars from life or being left screaming in a street full of lunatics, whispering, slut, bitch, bitch. Nigga, get out of here with all that. I didn't have any of that for you. I brought you what joy I found. And I found joy on his fingers round my face with dead musicians on 78s from Cuba, alive musicians on $5 LPs from Chicago, where I've never been. And I love Willie Colon and Arsenio Rodriguez, cause I can make the music so loud there is no me but Dan. And when I can dance like that, there ain't nothing can hurt me. But I get tired. I have to come off the floor. And then there's that woman who hurt you, who you left three or four times and just went back. After you put my heart in the bottom of your shoe, you just walked right back to where you hurt. And I didn't have nothing. So I went to where somebody had something for me. But he wasn't you. And I was on my way back from her house in the bottom of your shoe. So this is not a love poem. There are only memorial albums available. Even Charlie Mingus wanted desperately to be a pimp. I won't be able to see Eddie Palmieri for months. So this is a requiem for myself, because I have died in a real way. Not with aqua coffins and doo-wop Cadillacs I used to joke about when we was messing around, but a real dead loving is here for you now. 
because I don't know anymore how to avoid my own face wet with my tears. I had convinced myself colored girls had no right to sorrow. And I lived and loved that way and kept sorrow on the curb. I allegedly for you. But I know I did it for myself. I couldn't stand it. I couldn't stand being sorry and colored at the same time. It's so redundant in the modern world. I lived with myths, and music was my old man. And I could dance a, a dance out of time, a dance with no partners, take my pills, keep right on stepping, linger in non-English speaking arms so there was no possibility of, of understanding. Then you came. You came saying, I am the nigger. I am the baddest mother out there. And I said, yes. Yes, this is who I've been waiting for. But to come with you, I had to bring everything. The dance and the terror and, and the dead musicians and the hope. And those scars that I had hidden with smiles and good love and lay open. And I don't know anymore. I don't know any more tricks. I am really colored and really sad sometimes, and you hurt me more than I ever danced. Out into oblivion isn't far enough to get out of this. Please, I'm ready to die like a lily in the desert. And I couldn't let you in on it because I didn't know. Now, here's what I have for you. Poems. Big thighs, little tits, oh, and so much love. Oh, would you take it from me this one time? Please, let me love you. I don't want to dance with ghosts and snuggle lovers I made up in my drunkenness. Let me love you just like I am, a colored girl. I am finally being real no longer symmetrical and impervious to pain. We deal with emotions too much. So why don't we go on ahead and be white then and make everything dry and abstract with no rhythm and no real and for sheer sensual pleasure? Oh, yes, let's go on ahead and be white while we're right in the middle of it. No use holding out, holding on to ourselves. Let's Think our way out of feel and let's abstract ourselves some families. And maybe tonight I'll find a way to make myself come without you. No fingers or other objects, just thought, which isn't spiritual evolution because it's empty. And godliness is ripe, is fertile. Thinking won't do me a bit of good tonight. I need someone to love me and haven't the audacity Darcy to say, where are you, and don't know who to say it to. I've lost it. Touch with reality. See, I don't know who's doing it. I thought I was, but I was so stupid, I was able to be hurt. And that's not real, not anymore. I should be immune if I'm still alive. And that's what I was discussing how I am still alive, and my dependency on other living beings for love. I survive on intimacy and tomorrow. That's all I got going. And the music was like smack. And you knew about that and still refused. My dance was not enough, and it was all that I had. But being alive, and being a woman, and being colored is a metaphysical dilemma I have not conquered yet. Do you see the point? My spirit is too ancient to understand the separation of soul and gender. My love is too delicate to have thrown back in my face. My love is too beautiful to have thrown back on my face. All right, y'all. My love is too take it to the bridge to have thrown back on my face. It's I'm telling you. My love is too... Somebody almost walked off.
off with all my stuff. Hmm. Not my poems. A uh, dance I gave up in the street. Mm -hmm. But somebody almost walked off with all my stuff like a kleptomaniac. Huh. Working hard and forgetting while stealing. I get you. This is mad. Right. This ain't your stuff. Now, won't you put me back and let me hang out in my own cell? Honest to God, somebody almost walked off with all my stuff and didn't care enough to send a note home saying I was late for my solo conversation. The two sizes too small for my own tacky skirts. <laughs> what can anybody do with something with no value on open market? Nothing. Did you get a dime for my thing? Hey, man, where are you going with all my stuff? This is a woman's trip. I need my stuff to hold it Daddy, I got a main line number for my own A-line. Now, don't you put me back and let me play this duet with this silver ring in my nose. We're working overtime now. Somebody almost run off with all my stuff, and I didn't bring anything but the kick and the sway up. Mm. The perfect ass for my man. And none of it is theirs. This is mine, Juanita's, her own thing. That's my name. You give me my stuff back. I see you hide my lap. I sit sometimes with my legs open to give my crotch some sunlight. Oh, there go my love, my toes, my chewed up fingernails. Mm -hmm. Nigga, with the curls in your hair. Yeah. Mr. Louisiana Hot Link, I want some stuff back. Ooh. My rhythms and my voice. Open my mouth and let me talk you out of throwing my things in the sewer. Mm -hmm. This is some delicate legs right, right. and some whimsical kiss I got to have yes. to give them my choice without you running off with all my stuff. Uh -huh. Now who was this he left me with? Some simple bitch with a bad attitude. Girl, you I want my things. <laughs> I want my arm with the hot iron scar. I want my leg with the flea bite. Uh -huh. I want my callous feet and my quick language back of my mouth, my fried plantains, and pineapples, and pear juice, and sunrise, and Joseph, and jewels. I want my things how I lived them. And give me back my memories, how I was when I was there. You can't have them, but do nothing with them. Stealing my stuff from me don't make it yours. It makes it stolen. Somebody almost walked off with all of my stuff, and I was standing there looking at myself the whole time. It wasn't a spirit that took my stuff to and tell it. It was a man whose ego walked around like Rodan's shadow. A man faster than my innocence. A lover I made too much room for, I almost walked off with all my stuff. And I didn't know I'd give it up so quick. And the one running with it don't know he got it. And I'm shouting, this is mine. And you don't know you got it. My stuff is the anonymous ripped off treasure of the year. Do you know somebody almost got away with me in a plastic bag underneath their arm? me dangling on a string of personal carelessness. Yeah. I'm spattered with mud and city rain. Mm. And no, I didn't get a chance to take a douche. Hey, man, this is not your prerogative. I gotta have me in my pocket to get around like a good woman should. To make the poem in the pot. Yeah. Or the chicken in the dam. But I got to have I gotta have my stuff to do it too. And won't you find your own thing? Leave this package of me for my destiny. What you got to give for me, I'll give it to you. Yeah, I'll give it to you.
Around five o'clock in the winter when the sky is blue red and Dew City's getting pressed. If it's really my stuff, you're gonna have to get it to me. If you really want it. I'm the only one who can handle it. talking about I'm sorry. You know he was. <laughs> last week, last week, my old man came up to me talking about, baby, a daughter know how she got your number. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is it. This one is it. You know I was high, baby. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> you need to let him go up and scratch Girl, scratching. You know, girl. Girl, scratching. I, I'm, on, I'm only human. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And inadequacy. <gasps> is what makes us human. <laughs> and if I was perfect, I wouldn't have nothing to strive for. So you might as well go on and forgive me, pretty baby, because I'm sorry. That <laughs> is <laughs> sorry. Wait, 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 you're <laughs> sorry, right? Right? No, that this is, is the sorry. ultimate, right? Well, uh, Shut up, bitch. I told you I was sorry. Girl, <laughs> is that what you've been doing these I years? I see that little mark under your eyes. eyes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, we won't talk about that. And why you hard life? It's a hard life for the colors. Isn't it? Wow, woman. You been good? You know that's good. Yeah, <laughs> One thing I don't need is any more apologies. I got sorry greeting me at my front door. You can keep yours. I don't know what to do with them. They don't open doors or bring the sun back. They don't fetch a morning paper. They don't make me happy. Didn't nobody stop using my tears to wash cars because of sorry, and I am simply tired of collecting. I didn't know I was so important to you. I'm gonna have to throw some away. Can't get to the clothes in my closet for all of the sorry. Doc, a sign to my door. Leave a message by the phone. If uh, you call to say you're sorry, call somebody else. I don't use them anymore. I let sorry and um, and didn't mean to, and how could I know about that? Take a walk down a dark and musty street in Brooklyn. I'm gonna do exactly what I want to, and I won't be sorry for none of it. Now let a sorry soothe your soul. I'm gonna soothe mine. You were always inconsistent, always doing something, then being sorry. I'm gonna beat my heart to death talking about you sorry. Well, I am not going to be nice. I will not call. I'll raise my voice and scream and holler and break things and race the engine and act a raven fool and tell all your secrets about yourself to your face. And I will know I will list in detail each of my wonderful lovers in their ways. And I will play Oliver Lake loud and I won't be sorry for none of it. Oh, I loved you. I loved you on purpose. I was open on purpose. I still crave vulnerability and close talk. And I am not even sorry about your being sorry. You can carry all the guilt and grime you wanna. No, just don't give it to me. I can't use another sorry. Next time, next time you should admit that you are mean and, and low down, trifling. 
no count. Straight up, instead of being sorry all the time, enjoy being yourself. There was no air. The sheets made ripples under his body like crumpled paper napkins in a summer park. <laughs> and little specks of something from between his toes or the biscuits from the day before ran the sweat that tucked the sheets into his limbs like he was an old frozen bundle of chicken. And he'd get up, make coffee, drink water, drink wine. Wished one of his friends who knew where he was would come by with some blow. Mm. Anything. There was no air. <laughs> He'd see the spotlights in the alleyways downstairs moving in the air across the wall and over his face. He'd get under the covers and wait for an all clear or tell he could hear traffic again. Now, there wasn't nothing wrong with him. <laughs> there wasn't nothing wrong with him, he kept on telling me. Any nigger want to kill Vietnamese children more than stay home and raise his own is sicker than a rabbit dog. That's how our thing had been going since he got back. I just got into saying what a fool nigger bo was. Always had been. <laughs> Didn't he go all over uptown telling everybody the child wasn't his? Probably some no-counts bastard. And you can call any of the city police and come get me if they want. Cause soon as that blood type is together, everybody gonna know that you are no good lion ho. And this after I've been his girl since I was 13 years old when he caught me on the stairway. He came home crazier than hell. He tried to get veterans benefits so he can go to school, but they kept right on putting him in remedial classes cause he couldn't read worth a damn. Damn. Bo accused the teachers of holding him back, got himself a gypsy cab to drive. But the cab kept on breaking down and the cops was always messing with him. Plus not getting much bread. And I went and got pregnant again. Bobo's beat me half to death when I told him about it. I still got a scar under my left tit where he cut me up. Still, I went on and had my baby. So now Bo had two children, a little girl, Naomi Kenya, and a little boy, Kwame Bo Willie Brown. And there was no heir. How in the hell did he get in this mess anyway? Somebody came and told me that Bo was spending all of his money on that bartending bitch down to the merry-go-round cafe. Bo sat straight up in the bed, wrapped up in his sheets, looking like John the Baptist or a huge baby with stubble and nuts. Now, he had to figure how to get all that mess out of my mind, so I would let him come home. I had gone and got myself a court order saying Bo Willie Brown had no access to my children. If he showed his face, he was subject to arrest. You've been in my Aston Mary since you was 14 years old. Now, here you're 22, and you're going to throw me out because I want to marry you. What you want to marry me for now? So I can support your ass? Or come sit with you and then lock your behind up? Because they're going to come. And I ain't gonna have nothing to do with it. <laughs> you damn lunatic. <laughs> I ain't gonna have nothing to do with it. I wouldn't marry your pitiful black ass for nothing. The next day, Bo came in blasted. He got to swinging chairs at me, screaming and hollering about how I was gonna marry him and get some more veterans benefits and, and he could stop driving them crazy spicks around while they trying to kill him for $15. Bo was sweating something terrible beating on me. And when he couldn't do no more with the table and chairs, he went to get the high chair, and little Kwame was in it. So now Bo was beating me with the high chair and my son, and some notion got into him to stop. <laughs> and he run out. I almost died. That's why the police wouldn't allow Bo around where he lived. 
And I've been telling the children that the daddy tried to kill me and Kwame and he just wanted to marry me, that's all. <laughs> marry me and have a family, but the bitch was crazy. Bo was sitting in this hotel room in his drawers, drinking coffee and wine in the heat of the day, spilling it all over himself, laughing about how, how, how he was going to get me to take him back and let him be a man in the house. And I wouldn't even have to go to work no more. He got all dressed up in his ivory shirt and his checkered pants to come see me. Going to get this mess all cleared up. Teresa. Bitch, I want to marry you. Can you hear? I said I want to marry your black ass. You always want to be a whore. Don't you want a husband, bitch? Can you hear me? Leave us alone. Just leave us alone. Bitch, I'm a... Look, Bo, Bo, look. Look, the police is going to come for you, fool. Do you want the children to see you act a fool again? Do you want Kwame to brain damage from you throwing him around? Look, 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 don't you show your ass again or I'll kill you. Now, I, I swear I'll kill you. Don't you touch my children. I will kill you. Mom. I'm sorry. I don't want to hurt him. I, I just wanted to hold him. I just wanted to hold him. I don't want to cause you no more trouble. I just wanted to marry you, give you things. What you gonna give? A broken jaw? I said, nigga, get out of here. Baby, I can be a good father. Stop. You're such a pretty little thing. Hot little mama. Not you. That's her. Come on, let me hold my son. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, let me hold my son. I got him. I got him. I got him. I got him. Let me kiss him. You gonna marry me? Oh, I ain't gonna marry you, Bo. I ain't never gonna marry you. You gonna marry me? Huh? You gonna marry me? 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 Huh? You gonna marry me? You gonna marry you come over here and tell the neighbors that. Come on. Come on over here and tell all the neighbors you're gonna marry me. Come on. I'll do anything. Right now. I will, I'll marry you. I'll do anything. No! No! I stood by Bo in the window with 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 the with, with, with the children hanging out and all the people down below screaming and, and hollering. And I, I could only...
missing. I was missing something. Something so important. Something promised. A laying on of hands. Fingers near my forehead. Strong. Cold. Moving. Making me whole. Sense. Pure. All the gods coming into me, laying me open to myself. I was missing something. Something promised. Something free. A laying on of hands. I know about laying on bodies. Mm. Laying out a man, giving him all of my flesh itself and some of my pleasure. Thanks. Being taken, ego full, wet like I get some pleasure. Oh. I was missing something. A laying on a hand. Not a man. Laying on. Not my mama. Laying, holding me tight, saying I'm always gonna be a girl. Not a laying on a bosom and wound. A laying on a hand. The holiness of myself released. I sat up one night, walking a boarding house, screaming and crying the ghost of some other woman who was missing what I was missing. I wanted to jump up out of my bones and be done with myself, leave me alone, going in the wind. It was too much. And I fell into a numbness. Till the only tree I could see just, just picked me up and held me in the breeze and made me dawn do that silence, that chill at daybreak. The sun wrapped me up, swinging rose light everywhere, and the sky laid over me like a million men. Woo! I was cold. I was burning up. I was a child. And Weaving garments for the moon with my tears. I found God in myself. And I loved her. I loved her. Fierce. I'm outside San Francisco, and this is for color girls who have considered suicide, but are moving to the ends of our own rainbows. So See, see her on rhythm. 